much. But Team Coin needs to check out utcoinsforyou.com. There will be a link in the description. And if you use the code CHEZ, you can get yourself a 5% discount. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode here on Xbox One. It's episode number 43, and as you can see on screen, the counter-offer that we put in to Juventus for Romelu Lukaku of £15 million has been accepted. And another offer that's been accepted is our uh, our Money Plus Michael Sen deal for Leroy Fair. Now he wants £60,000 a week, which I'm more than happy to give him. Sen was on more than that anyway, so uh, we're still going to get uh, some money saved in the wage bill. And we'll offer that to Leroy Fair, and we'll have to see what he says. But uh, we come into this one. The uh, the last game in the previous episode was away at Manchester United in the league, and we start today's episode with Man United again, this time at home in the FA Cup. Now, well, we didn't win the FA Cup last year, we got knocked out uh, quite early on, and uh, we won the Capital One Cup and Champions League. So my two competitions of focus this year, or this second season, are the FA Cup and the Premier League. Now, we sit top of the league as things stand, and uh, of course, it would be nice to progress through in the FA Cup as well, because like I say, it really is a competition that I would love to win, so we can round out the Chelsea career mode with a win in all four competitions. And Torres gets us off to a wonderful start. Now, he's a truly spectacular strike from Fernando there, putting us 1-0 up in the 24th minute, and he's scored a couple of important goals for us recently. In yesterday's episode, he scored the opener against West Brom, which was, again, a very, very good strike. And despite Luis Muriel, who uh, has pushed his way into the first team, Torres is letting me know that uh, he's still in the reckoning for a first team slot and if I need him to he can put the goals away so he's definitely proving that in uh, in this one and we were so so fortunate to uh, to go 1-0 up there but just a couple of minutes later we're going to catch him on the counter attack with a lovely speedy breakaway Andre Scherl is in behind the entire defence one on one and in the space of two minutes we scored two goals at Stamford Bridge against Manchester United and we're 2-0 up at home in the FA Cup absolutely delighted with the way things are going so far we almost get a chance to go 3-0 up here just three minutes after going 1-0 up and uh, Lucas Piazzon again gets in behind but this time the goalkeeper is able to make a fantastic diving save to keep us at bay so we almost scored three goals in the space of five minutes which would have been absolutely mental especially against the team of Man United's calibre but, but uh, Fabio was tearing me apart weirdly down the left hand side every single move Man United put together was uh, was through him and we had to call on uh, on Petr Cech there to uh, to make sure that uh, we weren't able or they weren't able to get themselves back in the game so we went in at half time at 2-0, those two quick-fire goals, the difference as we went in at the break. And we were trying to extend the lead if we possibly could, because the third would just kill the game off completely. And uh, Lucas Piazzon has been pushing his way into uh, into the team recently, ahead of a few others. Torres obviously scored uh, a goal quite similar to that against West Brom in, uh, in the previous episode. But unfortunately, this time, his first-time volley wasn't quite as good as it was yesterday. And it flies about 50 bajillion yards wide. And we had to call on the goalkeeper yet again to keep Man United at bay. And before the game was out, we are going to get some shock turn of events. As you can see, there was a player down there. And we're going to come back to it. It's Kevin De Bruyne lying on the floor holding his knee. And uh, unfortunately, you'll be able to see it. We'll say on the screen in just a minute, he's actually got some medial collateral ligament damage. Of course, that's a ligament in the knee that uh, has been torn or... Uh, or damaged in some regard and he's actually going to be out for three months which is going to be a big miss he's one of our uh, one of our better youth prospects that really does look painful though kind of clashing knees with uh, with Nani or Valencia there and then uh, flopping to the floor in a heap of pain and they were actually going to pull one back before the game was out lovely turn from Shinji Kagawa to put the Shinji Shinji Kagawa to, uh, to put the ball into the back of the net to, uh, to bring him back to 2-1 but that was unfortunately for them although we're going to be able to muster in this second half Thibaut Courtois was able to keep them out for the rest of the game and we progressed through to the next round of the FA Cup so that was our first FA Cup uh, exploit so far this season so uh, we're into the fourth round of the FA Cup which is absolutely superb we are sending Ryan Bertrand out on loan there's a little bit of a more transfer action coming out now between the uh, the two games in this episode we're accepting our loan offer for Ryan Bertrand so he's going out to Borussia Mönchengladbach and hopefully he can get a lot of first team football there and improve as a player and then come back and potentially be our first First team, um, first team Ashley Cole replacement. Although uh, Deshilio is putting in a lot of good performances, and he may be the player to replace uh, Ashley Cole when he leaves. But Lukaku was gone to Juventus for uh, for 15 million pounds. We'll use 11 million pounds of that towards our uh, transfer budget, and we're bringing in Leroy Fur for 8 million pounds plus Michael Essien. Now, uh, of course, with Lukaku going. 
we're uh, we're going to need a new striker now. Fernando Torres is probably going to be on his way out at the end of the season due to his stats starting to drop and he's getting on a bit. But I don't have the money right now to bring in a huge marquee signing like we did with Luis Muriel. So even though I almost bid 60 million for Loic Remy here, uh, he's at, back at QPR. He's only 28, so he's got a couple of years left in him, and he is a very very effective player for the Premier League. So I'm going to put in a bid for him at six million pounds. He's just a fantastic uh, effective player for a cheap price to do the job for the next six months perhaps 18 months if we continue into the third season but a realistic transfer is most definitely Kurt Zuma and of course the the, uh, the board wants to strengthen defensively so I've put in an offer for Kurt Zuma of course he legitimately has moved to Chelsea in real life despite going back out on loan to St Etienne but uh, we'll try and bring him in if we possibly can but look Remy has had the bid accepted from uh, from QPR for £6 million and we'll try and get him to accept the contract offer as well and we're actually going to offer uh, some money plus a player deal again after the initial money only deal has been rejected by St Etienne going to offer uh, two million pounds plus Gary Cahill we're using or kind of utilizing that cash plus player deal very very much so in this series so far with uh, with course we did it with Diego Costa we've done it with um refer Michael Essien and now we're doing it with Gary Cahill hopefully they'll accept that but uh, our first game of uh, back to the Premier League action is actually against Norwich City and uh, of course Leroy Fer has just signed for us and as you can see we are top of the table so if we can pick up three points it'd be absolutely superb to uh, hopefully extend that lead at the top of the table but this is Leroy Fer's first game for us and it is against his former club much like when Fernando Torres first joined Chelsea back in 2011 and uh, of course his first game for the club was against Liverpool his former club so uh, we're hoping that uh, he was going to be able to put in a good performance for us here and Arturo Vido almost gets us off to a fantastic start drawing a good save out of John Ruddy now it was, isn't too long ago since we actually played Norwich at home in the Premier League so of course it does like to, uh, to kind of flip the fixtures back on themselves once you get halfway through the season and uh, John Ruddy really put in some fantastic performances against us in that game although we were able to run out winners and he was doing it again here as you can see making save after save and then unfortunately Lucas Piazzon smashes that effort the final effort over the bar but Quadro Asamoah gets around the outside and it was more just a hopeful uh, shot than anything a real hit and hope for the edge of the box trying to get it across the goalkeeper into that far bottom corner I wasn't confident of it going in but he was able to pull it back across the goalkeeper just get the angle right with that fantastic left foot Really what really awesome fantastic strike to get it into that far bottom corner. John Ruddy beaten and we're one nil up. But we're gonna have another chance here. Quadra are gonna play the ball down the line, looking for Leroy Fair against his former club, like we've mentioned. He's gonna try and whip the ball in. Up goes Fernando Torres, another fantastic header from the goalkeeper, and this time we aren't able to make it to the rebound. And Norwich are gonna almost be able to clear their lines after John Ruddy makes another good save from Arturo Vidal. Now, uh, unfortunately, they were going to get their chances in the second half. And Salomon Rondon breaks through really, really nicely here. Now, he scored a fantastic goal against us in the uh, in the reverse fix, so hitting it in off the post. But fortunately, this time, he misses the opportunity. But he's going to be involved yet again, playing the ball over the top to Anthony Pilkinson. Good shot, good save. And then Gary Hooper, I just, I, I just don't know. I don't know how he's missed it. Oh no, it was Johnny Housen, sorry, not uh, not Gary Hooper, my mistake. But I don't know, I just don't know how he's missed. Luis Miros coming on for Fernando Torres, trying to kill the game off if we possibly can. But if you remember from the first game, we had uh, we had some bad news with the Kevin De Bruyne injury. You see Arturo Vidal went down in an absolute heap there. Now this is actually worse than the Kevin De Bruyne one. Kevin De Bruyne did his medial collateral ligament out for three months. Arturo Vidal's done his anterior cruciate ligament. He's going to be out for seven months months our best holding midfielder is going to be out for seven months so it is just as well that we've brought Leroy Fair in because he's going to need to play a massive role for us in the rest of the season Arturo Vido out for the rest of the season so a really really disappointing news but we're just going to have to uh, to grin and bear it and get on with it and try and do our best without him in the side and we're going to try and get ourselves a second goal here if we possibly can Lars Bender cuts inside and it's just a trickler of a shot but it is going to be able to find that bottom corner much like the Quadro Asamoah shot earlier on it's just the accuracy of the the, uh, the effort that puts it past the goalkeeper and John Roddy just can't cope despite the uh, the slow pace of the uh, the initial shot and we're going to take a 2-0 win from this one and three points so we're very very pleased to come away from this episode with progression in the cup and maintain our uh, three point record currently good form win win win
so far in the Premier League. And you'll be able to see as the, uh, the league table is going to pop up on your screen in just a second that that does in fact extend our lead at the top of the table to four points. But Arsenal still have that game in hand. So that is going to bring this episode to a close, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. That would be absolutely superb. If uh, you missed the previous episode, then there will be an annotation on your screen coming up in just a second on the end slate over the snippet of gameplay there. That will uh, take you to yesterday's video. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already and you'd like to do so, there's a link in the description and an annotation on screen over that little subscribe button. And other than that, that's going to bring this video to a close. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.